I was shocked by the number of comments I saw on my video talking about Arrow Lake Intel CPUs not getting uh, you know faster gaming performance this generation. Uh, I was shocked by the number of comments I saw, both on my video and uh, other channels' videos, PC subreddits and things like that, saying that, well, it's not that big of a deal because in realistic gaming situations, the current CPUs we have are actually fast enough. So, so uh, you would never notice a faster gaming CPU anyway, because uh, they, they claim that you only uh, get CPU bottlenecked if you have some stupid unrealistic test settings like 1080p on a 4090, which makes sense to test maximum performance of CPUs, but doesn't match realistic real world use cases. And this is just completely incorrect. So what I'm showing you guys right now is that I am incredibly CPU bottlenecked right now. Notice that the GPU usage right now is hanging around 50 to 60% utilization. And I'm on an RTX 4090 at 1440p on a 7800X 3D, currently the fastest gaming CPU. And this is not at 1080p resolution, this is native 1440p. I'm not even using upscaling. Uh, now, this is Jedi Survivor, and we'll look at other games because this game is famously poorly optimized, but actually this game is significantly more optimized than it was at launch. They recently had, a, had a, yet another patch improving performance, including CPU performance. But even now, we're sitting here at 1440p resolution, epic settings, uh, with ray tracing on, and uh, upscaling and frame generation disabled. So, you can see here that at these settings, uh, and again, I'm, I'm playing this live. This isn't pre-recorded here. Uh, yeah, we're over 60 FPS, but honestly, not by that much. We're hanging out like something in the 60 to 70 FPS range. And somebody who has a 4090 on a 1440p monitor probably has a pretty high refresh rate 1440p monitor. And, uh, you know, like maybe in a single player game, I'm not too devastated if I'm, uh, you know, not hitting 240 FPS or 360 FPS. But guys... You guys see me occasionally dipping below, d dipping below 60 FPS as I was running around? Did you guys see that? <laughs> um, that's not the GPU. If I had a faster gaming CPU, um, the performance here would be better. So yes, we absolutely do want to see better gaming performance coming out uh, on, uh, on newer CPUs. So you can pair them with your high-end build. And yes, this is a 4090, but if I put in a lower-end um, GPU, uh, you know, maybe not like super low end, but but uh, you would definitely, basically what I'm saying is this is the highest frame rates you can achieve on this CPU, no matter how good of a GPU you put in it, right? The only way to get better performance here is either to turn down graphic settings or get a faster CPU. So if you're trying to play at max settings, uh, this game is, is very likely to be CPU bottlenecked, even on a 7800X 3D. And some of you are gonna be like, uh, like well, you know, maybe if you're on a 4090, uh, you're playing at 4K resolution. You're never CPU bottlenecked at 4K resolution. Uh, well, let's go ahead and kick on uh, 4K resolution and see what happens. Um, so, 4K resolution. Let, let, let's see how, how true that, that actually is. All right, so now we are getting, uh, we were around 98% GPU utilization, but now we dipped down to 91% there for a second. Uh, as I turn the corner, we, we hit down to 90% again. Ooh, now we're down into the 80s, 86%. There's some stutters here. The frame time graph doesn't look great. So even though the average frame rate isn't horribly CPU limited, you're getting these stutters. And if I kick on the benchmark counter to where you can see the 1% lows, uh, you can see that the 1% lows are actually dipping uh, horribly here. Um, they're even actually dropping down into the 30s at times. Um, it, it's actually pretty terrible. And um, so again, this is going to be improved if you are on a faster CPU. Also, I'll argue that most people on a R RTX 4090 at 4K resolution will still use DLSS, at least at the quality setting, and often even at the balanced or performance setting. In a lot of games, I will use DLSS performance at 4K because it generally uh, does look very close to native resolution, can often get you a huge performance boost. Um, however, it doesn't get you performance boost if you are CPU limited. Uh, here, I'm gonna go ahead and reset the, the frame rate counters, but we're now using DLSS quality, and if I run around town here, you can see that, yeah, our average frame rate is a bit better than we were um, you know, at, at native 4K resolution, but the 1% lows aren't much better, and you'll still see the GPU usage dropping, um, uh, dropping well below 99% at times. Yeah, it will be at 99% at times, 
but it'll also drop lower than that, especially when the frame time spikes uh, and we get those 1% lows. So again, I would very much have a better experience here if a faster gaming CPU was available. Now, I also don't want you guys to interpret this as, you know, a uh, spoiled YouTuber with a 4090 and a 7800X3D whines about game performance. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm trying to counter the myth that uh, high-end gaming PCs aren't CPU bottlenecked, right? That's what I'm countering here. So yes, you would notice better and smoother performance, especially in the 1% lows, uh, even at 4K resolution. And if you are somebody who uses DLSS performance at 4K resolution, uh, we're gonna see this even more, uh, uh, more extreme. Notice, once again, uh, that our frame rates aren't doing a whole lot better than they were uh, before I went down to DLSS performance mode. Notice again, the GPU usage dropping into the 80s at times, and the 1% lows aren't doing that great. Now, again, some people are going to say that, uh, okay, it's just Jedi Survivor though. This game is just famously terribly optimized, and I get it, um, uh, I absolutely get it, but also this is a realistic gaming scenario. This is a popular game, I played it when it, when it came out and it was even worse optimized than this. Um, but let's also go ahead and look at some other games. All right, now I'm running around Hogsmeade in Hogwarts Legacy and you'll notice the GPU usage again is way, way below uh, 99%. We're kind of bouncing around the 60s and 70% range. And our overall frame rate is just kind of in the 60s. I would love to be having a smoother experience here. I would uh, love if the 4090 could kind of stretch its legs, but it is limited. It is waiting for the rest of the system. A faster CPU uh, would be nice here. But uh, what settings are we at? Is this realistic uh, settings somebody might want to use on a high-end system? Uh, once again, here we are at pretty realistic settings because I'm on a 4090, I'm at ultra settings with ray tracing on. And the GPU is clearly able to handle it and uh, has headroom to spare. We're just getting uh, the um, uh, CPU limited. Now we're at 4K monitor resolution, rendering at DLSS quality. So not even that aggressive of upscaling for a 4K display. So DLSS quality on a 4K screen, on a 4090 and a 7800X3D. And again, our overall frame rates are not that great. Um, our 1% lows certainly dip down extremely low. Our average frame rate is only hanging out around 60 and the 4090 is half asleep. You can see the uh, wattage is only hanging out around 250, 260 watts uh, when it, if it was fully challenged, could go all the way up to over 400 watts, but it's waiting for the rest of the system. So do we need faster systems uh, to feed high-end GPUs even at 4K resolution? Absolutely, yes. Um, now again, this could be even more extremely CPU limited if you were uh, using upscaling more aggressively, for example, or playing on a, on a uh, 1440p display or something like that. So for example, if we were at DLSS performance, uh, which again on a 4K display when you're using ray tracing is not an unrealistic or unreasonable thing to do. Um, but again, not really gonna boost our performance. Uh, our frame rate number is gonna stay around where they were because the GPU is even, uh, even more asleep. <laughs> Uh, with our GPU usage dr dropping into the 55% range at times here, 51%. So the 4090 is just half asleep waiting on the rest of the system despite being on the fastest gaming CPU on the market. So again, and this is on a realistic settings for a 4K system. Uh, let's hop into at least one more game to kind of prove the point. All right, I've popped into Spider-Man Miles Morales and you can see the 4090 hang out at around 80% utilization. Now, overall frame rate numbers in this game are certainly a lot better than uh, uh, what they were in um, you know, the other games that we looked at, but it doesn't change the fact that we could be having higher performance uh, if we had a higher end CPU. Now, this is currently at, uh, on a 4K display, although I am using DLSS performance mode upscaling, so we could uh, again, first of all, I don't think that's an unrealistic use case for a lot of people, but we could back off on the resolution scaling a bit here. Uh, maybe go to uh, you know balanced mode upscaling, which again at 4K resolution, 
Um, completely realistic settings here. And once again, uh, we see the GPU not being fully utilized, uh, kind of dipping down into the upper 60% range, lower 70% range. Uh, not at all uh, uncommon numbers here. And yeah, we're over 100 FPS most of the time, uh, but that doesn't change the fact that the system is CPU limited on reasonable settings for 4K. Now, the graphic settings wise, it's just maximum everything. Uh, very high everything, ray tracing, very high everything. But as you can see, the 4090, the GPU can handle absolutely everything maxed out. It's waiting for the CPU, despite this being, again, the 7800X3D. So um, if I went to uh, quality level upscaling, which again at 4K resolution, uh, I think most people would at least be using quality level DLSS in most games, as opposed to kind of brute forcing native 4K resolution. Here you can again see that we are actually still a bit bottlenecked. The GPU usage is up to, you know, 85, 90% more often now, but still the game would be rendering faster uh, if we had a faster CPU in it. Overall system, uh, uh, you, know, you know, performance is fairly good. We could frame rate cap under this or something like that, but I think you guys get the idea. So what was the overall point of this video? Uh, the point was mostly that I'm kind of sick of people saying that uh, you're never CPU limited at 4K resolution, especially if you have a fast CPU. That's just not the case. And we are about to get the 50 series of GPUs, which means that the, uh, you know, the 4090 is currently the fastest thing we've got out there. If the rumors about the 5090 are true, it's going to be an absolute monster and probably crush the 4090. But if I put it into this system right now, you wouldn't know because it's not going to perform any better than the 4090 because we're still going to be waiting on the 7800X3D. And this is why I'm disappointed with this new uh, CPU generation from AMD uh, and Intel so far is that it looks like even if you are somebody who wants to build the highest end gaming uh, PC possible, uh, there's just not uh, a CPU that's going to keep up with the kind of GPU performance we're going to have at the high end. And the, uh, the uh, 5080 is rumored to be more performant uh, potentially than the 4090 that's in my system right here. And then who knows how close something like a 4070 would get to that, um, you know, kind of top end level performance. But again, uh, it's not just a 4090 at 1080p resolution that gets uh, CPU bottlenecked as I was seeing in the comment sections. Uh, reasonable settings uh, for a 4K uh, gaming system uh, are very, very easily CPU limited on the current fastest gaming CPU. So, um, am I am I whining? No, I'm, I'm saying like, like, like honestly, I, I enjoy gaming on the system. It's a good experience. What I am saying though, is it would be nice to have faster gaming CPUs available to keep up with high-end GPUs. And this generation was very disappointing in that we saw no faster gaming performance than the 7800X3D so far. So hopefully the 9800X3D offers us uh, some kind of meaningful performance bump, but if it's anything like the rest of the 9000 series, if the non-3D parts were only a couple percent faster than the non-3D, uh, you know, uh, previous gen parts, is our 9000 X3D parts just going to be a couple percent faster than 7800X3D? Well, that's not going to solve these CPU bottleneck problems, so I'm, I'm hoping for something a little more meaningful, but at this point, uh, long term for PC gaming, I'm getting a little bit scared uh, that GPUs can keep going wider, uh, but going wider on the CPU doesn't really help. So uh, is CPU performance ever going to catch back up to GPU performance? I don't know. And also, it is also important to note, there's lots of games that aren't that CPU bottlenecked, but I'm just showing that it's also not uncommon uh, for popular games uh, at reasonable settings on a 4K system to be CPU bottlenecked. Um, even, like I said, even for 4K systems at, re at realistic settings. I feel like I'm just rambling at this point, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Um, uh, and uh, I hope all of you have an excellent day.